Are you going to cut the clap sync out of the episodes? This time, gonna, yeah. This time, yeah? Yeah. You just wanted to illustrate the fact that it's a new studio in the last video, so you... Uh, and I was being lazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> It wasn't like, oh, we're doing things new. If you're listening on the podcast, you're going to blow your ears out. You're audibly watching it now. I edit, Yeah, I edited the podcast the same night we recorded, and it was reaching a point where I was like, I've reached the threshold of where I care. Um, well, it went up pretty, pretty quickly, actually. As of this recording, that first episode we did has like 20 views on YouTube, so that's... One of them Not might be me shabby. clicking through to see how did that work out visually. And yeah, and one of them was mine too. So realistically, eighteen uh, yeah. outside viewers. So thank you for watching. Yeah, it's pretty. Welcome cool. back. If you've come back, hmm. thank you. We're for glad being. that you have. <clears throat> well, now we can visually or visibly and audibly drink water <laughs> right. from our water bottles. Or these, the case may be. We yeah. should we should get a browser extension. So every time we look at the v- the video on YouTube of our podcast, um, it the the view count is two. Because <laughs> <laughs> there that is a thing, right? Because like uh, you can like do extensions that unhide the number of dislikes and stuff. Or there was a time where you could do that. I don't know if they with Chrome up patched that imagine. out. Yeah, because they were. They were hell bent on keeping dislikes private, so the only person that affected was the person making the video. Well, even in like the studio view, you can't really see the dislikes. You have to like, uh, you have to like dig for it. It's like on the. It's easy enough to find them. It's funny. I I, I look at the the videos I make. And I'm like, ooh, new dislike. <laughs> Although, uh, none of my like to dislike ratios are like below ninety five percent, which is actually really not too bad. Particularly for the one that okay, uh, uh, I just go on a tirade against the Disney Plus Star Wars. The helmets! <laughs> the there, helmets are back! There are a surprising number of people who will stand the Disney Star Wars, at least online. In real life, very few. Yeah. It's like either you don't care or you didn't care for them. And then like there's like the pocket of Twitter that it's got to be paid by Disney. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the Indirectly. people who are are still doing like the um, reveal at comic a trailer reveal at Comic Con trailer like shouting like they're so excited for the Marvels, right? Like, like, did you see the new trailer for the Acolyte, the Star Wars show? I did. It, it seems a little Marxist for Star Wars. I don't know if I care. They haven't convinced me to care. Yeah. Which, to be fair, Old Republic stuff is far enough removed where I can be like, I don't need to watch this. Right. At least like. The Mandalorian, you had your in-window, which was Boba Fett and the Mandalorian culture that you saw in Clone Wars. Uh, and, f- like, Andor I went into with no expectations, but it it, it worked. I liked it. Mm-hmm. But this is, like, also, this is the one that I hear is, like, Kathleen Kennedy's brainchild. And you're like, oh, you're the person that is associated with all the wrong things about modern I know Wars. that like Old Republic something or other was like teased to be happening like as soon as episode 9 was released. This is like right. this is a project that's coming in the future. When they got a hold of Star Wars they're like these are all the fun ideas we want to do. One of them was going to be an Old Republic type thing mm-hmm. because apparently the Knights of the Old Republic is a good game. Never played it uh that's a I whole see it on Steam Star sales Wars. every time and I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's a game people like and I forget about it." <laughs> right. Maybe I'll play it someday. I don't know. I'm gradually running out of things I want to play um, and time to play it. Yeah. Which is weird how, like, I was thinking, this is, I think, yeah, recording, and it'll probably be coming out during Holy Week. I was thinking, man, Lent's coming. I'll be giving up video games. I'll have so much time, and we proceed to be more busy than we ever have been prior, (laughs) at least in the last year. But also just, we just made a bunch of Lent commitments and just other yeah. parish commitments moving into the new house closer to the parish and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Got the house blessed. That was great. Thank yeah. you, Father Father Furch. Shout out to Father Furch. Yeah. 
I'll, play uh you want to play some uh smash ultimate with nathan sometime probably uh, I, I would be down to have anybody to play with yeah i mean i, I like going home and playing with simon that's a pretty it's a pretty big tv in that coffee bo- that that breakfast nook maybe i'll just bring my switch to game night sometime either to play maybe not smash smash specifically but there's like i got uh, that use your words party game I on feel, there. Yeah, use your words is great. Also, um, if there's well, I can get Jackbox games on Switch. Yeah, some oh. collections. Yeah, um, but that would be like a good like portable the, option to take. The first places. three I think are the best, and there's like a couple other ones. Yeah, there's like there's I, I really wish there was a way to get piecemeal individual like my party pack. I want yep. the Jackbox Nathan party pack. Which is probably just not the way they like program the games to be able to. I mean, they're they're. They know. probably are modular enough that they could be pulled out <clears throat> relatively easily. I mean, they do sell some of the games just like a standalone. Like thing. They have Quiplash as a standalone. They have yeah. you don't know because Quiplash as a and Fibbage are like their two big games yeah. that they're all well known for. And then there Drawful was... is pretty great. I like that one a lot. Yeah, I, I think it'd be great to be able to buy them piecemeal, but they, there's enough of them now that they could totally do that. One day we'll have to whip out our house Kahoot on an unsuspecting audience again. I found uh, that's still attached to my Kahoot account. <laughs> and I was like, this is just I, as stupid as I remember. I, I, I feel like it. we got to come up with a new we, one. We need Kahoot 2.0 yeah. for the new Dome of Snow there was Yeah, there was a lot of old, old in-jokes. I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, it would be a fun trip down memory lane to look naturally, through that one again. Naturally, Colton won, I think, when we had that Christmas Oh, of course. Because yes. we were barred from participating because we made it. But. And there were some people who were rather justifiably sort of like, how am I supposed to know this? <laughs> and stuff? that's the joke, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> we And then we went to Jackbox and some other games at right, that party, naturally. so like, where people actually had a legitimate chance of competing in any way, shape, or form, as opposed to just a massive troll on the entire Christmas party. That was pretty great, though. We had like 30 people there for that Christmas party, right. just hooting and hollering and having a good time. We pre- I think we turned the furnace off and opened windows because that house was not, well, it was a little too well insulated, we'll say. Um, but that was a very fond memory. I would very much like to have some kind of housewarming event here as once the l- Lent is over and we're in yeah. a season of uh, celebration. Yeah, that would be a good thing to do. Um, I doubt we'll get everybody's quite so married. Many people, but he, <clears throat> we're at gonna least have to, we're gonna have to have a spot uh, quarantine for the kids to play. Yeah, like a we can rubberize one of the rooms <laughs> so the toddlers can like not lock them in the Thunderdome together. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> many go in, one comes out. You just throw a bunch of like foam weapons in there. He's a Nerf gun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if it's warm enough. Backyard? Just backyard. Yeah. 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 We've got That'd a be, spacious was... backyard. You just put put up an electric fence and put them in it and then you <laughs> Hold them <on>. around. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? We have a regular fence. <laughs> 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 we don't advocate child cruelty in this podcast. Un- unless it's even, funny. Even if it's funny. Especially if it's funny, we don't advocate it. <laughs> but we'll speculate. Because it's funny. Um. Uh, <sighs> so all that forgot to put the saying, clock up again. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All right. So we it's, don't have this system down quite yet. No, this is literally the second time we've done this setup. I still want the speed run clock with the sp- splits. Okay. Perhaps even overlaid over top of the. So video. we'll add roughly nine minutes. To roughly nine. Roughly nine. To the clock. All right, to the clerk. I'm not going starting... to go all the way to 10 like we did last time. Which one am I looking at? I don't know. Okay, they're That's actually only like a couple seconds off. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. Irrelevant for the audience, but helpful for us. I mean, you could capture that uh, and put it up someplace. But like nah. that's not helpful yeah. for them. They well, have they have to... a counter on either YouTube or Spotify. Yeah, but it would be funny to have a split clock. Right. I, I want to have like... On the stream. Yeah. <laughs> In the corner. <laughs> <laughs> is we're speed running our own podcast, <laughs> speed running our podcast. <laughs> and we got like we're the sp- over under splits like the the average mm-hmm. times yeah over under our world record banter <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
what would really be helpful is over under our world record of like summary. Mm -hmm. Because that's gonna, it's gonna be easy to beat. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> the Avatar episode happened. We love uh, you, John. The, yeah, but and, the Avatar episode happened. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I feel no, like that's not I, even as bad as like I didn't the pace MCU. out. I didn't pace out Phoenix right properly. Yeah, there, there was <laughs> there was a lot of like. Well, I don't think we've done anything quite yet to compare with like the 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 first MCU podcast. Well, that's we didn't have our stuff together. That wasn't yeah. just one podcast. That, that was, yeah, that was, that was three. We took three, and they were very long, and it, it was very early on in the process. Which, if you feel so inclined, if you haven't already listened on Spotify, you can listen on Spotify. Also, and you can listen on YouTube and look at the low effort visualizer I put together for just a pulsating background. But so as not to burn the the image of our logo onto your screen. Yes, N we would never do that. Certainly not. <laughs> to remind you to watch, watch this. To, no, no. We but if we were. Right? Which we certainly would not. <laughs> but if we did, <laughs> that's how we'd do it. Uh, but yeah, no, working through the backlog, I initially am trying to upload them gradually twice a week. But there, as of the recording of this podcast, there were 139. No, actually, no. There's 139 audio only episodes. So you put. I've done the first 30. I've like made the videos to upload to YouTube for the first 30. So two a week, it's still going to be like 15 weeks before we catch up to of we're just at. that first batch that I edited. <laughs> so. so we've got uh, we got content for the YouTube to roll yeah. out, I suppose. We're going to keep things going. And I was also, you know, exploring the channel, looking around at, um, you know, the things we've done. And I'm like, you know, I should really go back. I keep saying this. I need to do the edits, finish the edits of the Zelda series. There's just eight hours of footage to do, go through. Dude, if you if you if you want to toss me an episode or two, I will make you look like a clown. But it will be that will be it'll get done. amazing. <laughs> if you would actually, yeah, that like, makes sense because you're already doing this sort of work anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm. It, it'll be a trick to um, schedule it in with like, regularly because mm -hmm. I've also got my own script work. I've I finished the. Oops, I what finished the script for my next video that I'm working on. For the most part, I'm still gonna need to did, polish it up. But did that one flicker? Yeah, you, uh, the one with Asana flickered. What did you do? I might have bumped it. So no, next video I've um, I have planned is is all scripted out. I just need to polish up the last thing, see how well it flows verbally, and then start recording. Mm -hmm. After that, it's just editing the <laughs> like a couple weeks of listening to my voice, me like oh, <laughs> and yep. putting it together. Then we can do both of our voices. Cutting out all of my uh, mouth sounds so that it like, yeah. comes out. Because you want that clean. good audio quality, but sometimes it has the side effect of you pick up in mouth noises. Right. And it's like, I don't like listening to other people's mouth noises. I, I don't want to podcasts make where to it's like way, too, like the audio is way too sensitive. You can hear every little tiny noise they make. It's like, do you also do ASMR on that mic? <laughs> it's like, mm. but no. So that, that's a process where I'm like, there's a lip smack there. Mm -hmm. I was drinking water to keep my throat hydrated and uh, mobile, uh, but th that leads to lip smacks. <laughs> nice 400-pound squat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. If there's a certain friend of ours that happens to be listening to this, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I hope you're doing well. Uh, <laughs> it's been too long. Yes. Come home. <laughs> yes. Um, anyway. Eventually, the uh, um, video versions of the bumpers will happen. That's another thing where... Soon TM. Yeah, soon TM. Yeah. You will have at least the audio of the bumper um, on the Spotify version, so I guess that's a audio only. Usually, people are trying to get you to like watch the video version of their podcast. But here's a plug for the Spotify version. I'm still doing... The bumpers will still be on those episodes. See, I was always on the train of... Why are we doing video at all? Yeah. But James did all the work, so it's here. And, yeah. and it apparently got, it's got, it got more views. Than <laughs> more views than, you than know, our, like uh, five episodes put together before that. So. Yeah. So if it increases the audience, it increases the audience. So, so there's more of a two of you. We're yeah. happy. There's more two of you. Mm -hmm. And it's like we, sh we put it on uh, different uh, audio-only platforms before. YouTube's essentially, at this point, another 
audio only platform, but you've got just there are plenty the of like video essay t- style videos. I'll just play in the background while I'm doing stuff, right? Because you don't really need to watch. So, sometimes it's like okay, I want to see what what they're talking about, but um, but yeah. like we don't have any crazy visuals going on. It's meant to be listened to in the background. Anyway, Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but just gonna the, be doing this the whole time. Well, Get that like, spatial it. audio going on the mics. <laughs> Give you that fine the, oral experience. But, like, I have never been a Spotify listener, listen to her at all. Mm. Never really been my thing. But I'm more inclined to keep a YouTube tab open in the background yep. while I'm doing something. Or somebody's, like, Twitch stream while I'm doing something. I so am. Like, I don't have the time to turn things into clips. I will do the YouTube short bit because it's funny. <laughs> And I might do this one as a YouTube short as well because every time we do the meta commentary, <laughs> we, we're going to make a YouTube short out of it. We need to YouTube short every time we talk about doing YouTube shorts. Yep. And that's like going to be our, our they, running They'll be the, all, the only the things only we ones. ever do YouTube shorts about are the times we're talking about the YouTube shorts. Like other people will script out like little conversations to have with themselves to like make it sound like they have interesting conversations on their podcast when they don't even have a podcast. They just make mm. shorts. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, whereas us, we're just talking about shorts here. <laughs> <sighs> Speaking of shorts, this banter section hasn't been particularly. We're the Palladium Papists. I'm James. I'm Nathan. And I'm Riley. <clears throat> and uh, the characters in this thing are kind of short, I guess. True. I suppose. The series is pretty short. Hard to, hard to judge when it's animated. But we're doing a super serial episode this week on Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, the Netflix series. That is the name of it, right? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, good. Good job. It's not versus the world or precious little life. It's it's takes off because that's what he does at the end of episode one. Spoilers. Now, our passionate and devoted two fans might be thinking, <laughs> guys, you already talked about Scott Pilgrim on a previous ep- episode. The video feed just flickered again. Anyway, you talked about this on a previous episode. Why are you bringing it up again? Well, Netflix made a series. Edgar Wright got the original cast of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. And they did an anime anime version with a different take on the story. And they also mm-hmm. worked with the original creator of the comics, as it turns out, to write the teleplay for it. So, uh, things begin with the show more or less how you would expect having watched the movie, at least like, the first <laughs> act of the movie. You introduce all the characters. You have Scott Pilgrim, and his, he's a bum 23-year-old who's dating a 17-year-old, and he has a band. In Toronto, Canada. In Toronto, Canada. Mm-hmm. He has a band called Sex Bomb, and they're not that great, but they're going to a rock show. And he meets this gal named Ramona Flowers, who's... In his dreams. In his dreams. she's uh, rollerblading through the interspace highway that runs through his dreams. Mm-hmm. And, so that she uh, can deliver Netflix DVDs faster, yes. As yeah. opposed to Amazon packages as it was in the movie. They switched it up. Uh, so he goes on a date with Ramona, and it's great, and there's sparks when they kiss, and it's all fun and good and whatever, and she agrees, even though he hasn't broken up with knives yet. Which Who's is the 17 year So they go to the rock show, and there's, it turns out there's this league of evil exes that used seven de- evil ed- Seven evil, deadly exes. Seven <laughs> evil exes who once dated Ramona at some point in her life, and they formed a league under the leadership of the billionaire mastermind Gideon, Gideon Graves. Mm-hmm. So the, fir- the first of her seven exes who dated her briefly in middle school because they were he was the only person that wouldn't bully her, mm-hmm. uh, shows up at the, the Matthew the rock Patel. Hustle. Matthew Patel. He challenges uh, Scott to a duel to the death for uh, for the right to date Ramona. And people who watch the movie are like, oh, I know how this goes. He beats him. And then so Matthew uh, throws a single punch. There's a big explosion of like smoke and stuff. And Scott Pilgrim disappears. And in his place is a few coins like you. Because when people beat. die, it, like it's like video game style. They blow right. up and there's coins everywhere. It's like they exist in a, a beat em up like it's River City Ransom or something. Yeah. Um. So that's not how the movie went. You're thinking. That's not the how audience. the comics went. You're thinking as you watch this. 
Yeah. What's going on? Why did Scott Pilgrim take off? Why did he die? Oh no. And Matthew Patel is like, what? I won. And everyone's like, what? Scott's dead? So Ramona isn't quite satisfied, though. She thinks something's a little off about his death. So um, she starts to go on a investigative journey, encountering each of her evil exes and trying to rule out who was the killer. And she finds out it wasn't even a killer to begin with. It was a vegan portal that a robot sucked Scott through and sent him they know not where. Um. But well, over the course of the her investigation, she reconnects with each of her evil exes and comes to terms with and uh, confronts them about, A, did you steal Scott? B, uh, this is why I left you. This is why you left me. They kind of hash it out by, by punching each other. Mm-hmm. It's it's how, how pro- problems are resolved in that uh, universe. Yep. Also, important kind of point, Matthew Patel goes back to the League of Evil, Evil Villains. And so it's like, I beat Scott. Like, what do I win? They're like, well, you won, I guess. Good job. He's like, do I get the girl? No. Well, what the heck? I'm going to fight Gideon for his empire, so I at least win something out of this. And he manages to win the fight, and mm-hmm. legally, Gideon is required <laughs> to is give everything binding. over. <laughs> the fight is legally binding. <laughs> So uh, Gideon is sent away in disgrace and Matthew Patel takes over the League of Evil Exes. Uh, But one by one, Ramona goes and reconciles with pretty much all of them in some way. Right. And they don't die in this iteration. Well, even in the original, when they they die and explode, they respawn back at their house. Oh. That's like confirmed canon, I believe, from the author. Uh. In fact... um, one of them, in in well, we'll get to the the part later. But like we talked to future Scott, and he uh, he talks about how the twins after he beat them they respawned back at their house and they yeah met, okay because I I caught that in the show but I never caught that in the movie. It wasn't important for the movie. Yeah, so it's like why 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 cover it? He won. Uh, so why were they having a funeral for Scott then if he he was on his last life? I don't know. Okay, uh, regardless. Go with it. <laughs> Um, it was a vehicle for yeah. Envy Adams showing up. Young Neil writes a movie. Yes, which is one of Scott's friends, the roommate of the leader of his band, mm-hmm. whose name is uh, Stephen Stills. Yep. So you've got Stephen Stills and Young Neil. It's like, those are music references. Mm-hmm. Who's Crosby? I don't know. <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't met uh, Crosby in this one. Um, from there, let's see, trying to pick up the thread. Uh, oh yeah. She's ruled everybody out. Ruled everybody out. And the only one who could have killed Scott was Scott from the future. Turns out he used a robot and a vegan portal made by the the robot robot made by the cot, the, the, the the twins. The twins she dated both at the same time, and that was a, a messy thing. They made a high-tech time-traveling robot to go grab him and prevent him from falling in love with Ramona because in the future, they get divorced and it breaks Scott's heart and he's all beat up, bent out of shape about it. Um, so Scott manages to get sent back in time. He, he actually uh, leaves old Scott uh, and finds old Ramona Mm-hmm. to to talk to like why did they why did they leave and Ramona that? meanwhile still loves uh, old Scott old Ramona still loves old Scott in the future it's just she has some she she walked away for some reason well she did she realizes over the course of the show that that's what she did to all of her exes is that she walked away from the people she loves and she realizes wait I needed to do something I need about to that stop pushing people away that I care about yeah so she. Writes a screenplay and pretends that Neil, young Neil, wrote it, so to make a movie that Scott would watch in the future and realize that she still loved him. It wasn't the greatest plan, but it sort of worked. And it, the the screenplay that young Neil wrote but didn't write because it was Ramona is based on a memoir by old young Neil in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Which was one of my favorite little gags mm-hmm. because in the future. Uh, Ramona and Scott get married and they have a life and then they have a they have a fight and they split apart for a while and then Scott overreacts and they end up divorced and it's rough and he doesn't take it well. So it's like, hey, if I go back in time and stop myself from dating Ramona, then I can avoid all this pain. 
And he's like, but I mean, I don't have to turn out this way. I think we can do so I can do something different with this knowledge to not make that mistake. And he's like, no, screw that. So he laces a kiss proof force field. So he's like, all right, well, the solution must be I have to go back in time to Ramona and then fight all of her evil exes, just like I did in the first timeline to get her. So uh, Matthew Patel, meanwhile, um, has gotten kind of bored of his empire and decides to do like a Broadway show. Based on the movie script that fell through because of, you know, various fights behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So it's now the Scott Pilgrim stage play yep. starring Matthew Patel as Scott Pilgrim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, That's funny. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so all the evil exes will be there. So it'll be perfect. Meanwhile, Gideon Graves turns out his name is um, Gordon, Gordon, Gordon Goose. Goose. And he falls in love. Or he, he reconnects. Reconnects with, with Julie. Julie Powers. Julie Powers, who is the foul-mouthed barista friend of theirs. She, is it is it Scott's sister who works with her mm -hmm. at the yep. coffee shop? Yeah. Yep. So they end up becoming a couple and because uh, Julie remembers him from when he was just a nerdy kid in high school um, and has pity on him and they become sort of semi-evil uh, <laughs> couple. Um, and uh, anyway, so they're all at this play and Gideon's like, okay, here's my chance. Or, well, Gordon, whatever. The goose is at the play like, here's my chance to get revenge on Matthew Patel for beating me. So he he's got bombs hidden in the rafters, but Scott's like, okay, all the evil exes here. I'm gonna okay, fight me for Ramona, and they're like, no, oh. we've already had emotional closure with her, dude. One we're by chill. one, we're chill. A robot tells us we're friends in the future, so we don't gotta fight. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, wait a minute, we still can't kiss. Oh, he's on the phone. Okay, uh, we still can't kiss. What's what's going on? What are we doing wrong? And a vegan portal sucks them into the uh, sort of uh, inner space area in scott's mind and old old scott is jacked even now. older scott. even older scott is jacked and super powerful now because he spent 10 years after young er, uh, current scott left he uh, left to go back in time and try to fix his relationship so he trains for 10 years to fight and force things to happen how he wants them so all of the i guess the crew now they're not really evil exes anymore they're just they're just the, the exes the exes they all get everybody gets is brought there and they all fight and uh they'll fight older scott older yep, scott together. is just too powerful mm. and one by one they're like oh wait a minute i don't need to fight all the exes my beef is with you younger scott so and ramona and then old older, even older ramona shows up. don't ask how old <laughs> shows right. up and melds with past Ramona and they have an emotional breakthrough and uh, tell Scott that he, that she loves them. And then they manage to defeat uh, old, even older Scott with the power of love or something. And uh, they get sent back and now they can kiss each other and fall in love. And it's, that's, that's that. So there's a little epilogue. Okay. So like uh, Lucas Lee, the Chris Evans uh, the, the, the action actor. star character founds his, Finds his uh, nascent barista, or uh, like a coffee barrister. Barista is the correct term in Spanish. It's Spanish, not okay. Italian. So it's, yes, barista is correct for either gender. Turns out he's a talented guy at making coffee. So he finds a new passion there. Um, and then uh, Gideon, Matthew Patel gets bored of the of the being a billionaire so he just gives it back to Gideon, except for to the part Gordon. where he's a broadway star it's like if you yeah can, if you i get to be a broadway star and they manage to prevent the bombs from going out right. but i'll give you your empire back uh i just want to be a broadway star and they're like cool um and everybody else just kind of goes and does their thing and the finds band their reforms. closure and has their their kind of ending that's a better ending because they've made oh up and scott Florida. apologizes to knives for not breaking up with her and in the meantime she's sort of developed a love for playing music and only needs four hours to learn uh bass or piano as the case and may instrument be. functionally enough to write an entire broadway musical by the way <laughs> there's that subplot yeah. about her and uh uh the band leader like writing the scott pilgrim musical and mm -hmm. coming up with genius lyrics like uh bread makes you fat yep the uh the uh band's all back together and they're just living life and scott and and uh 
and um, Ramona are, are a couple, and it's all hunky dory. So that is the Scott Pilgrim takes off anime synopsis. So, what do we like about Scott Pilgrim takes off? Animation's fun. At oh. first, I wasn't sold on the lip sync, but I got used to it. Mm. Um, it is weird to hear these people as voice acting as they were their characters. <clears throat> Apart from Chris Evans, they they all sounded substantially different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, than their on screen. Yeah, because Chris Evans was doing a voice to begin with. Yeah, yeah. He's hemming yeah. it up a little bit. Lucas Lee. Whatever. Lucas Lee. Yeah. Yep. Whatever. Whatever. And hinted that he uh, might fall in love with Kim because she says whatever. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Someone who doesn't care as much as I don't care. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, the And the art is like right out of the original comics. If you see any of the illustrations that came out of the original like webcomic turned graphic novel, they capture the art style perfectly. And the the movement and energy in that show is like they they capture like the pose to pose like panel to panel movement of a comic book really well. Uh, so like it's like the perfect visual adaptation of the Scott Pilgrim comics, even if narratively it does very much its own thing. And as we discovered over the course of the show, it's like oh the original creator was behind the writing of this, which is at the very well. least involved right. and. Yes checked off on it you know yep so he, it may not have been like his idea but it got his blessing so at the very least i'm like okay this isn't like netflix adaptation being netflix adaptation uh, on some level you know and i do think it's interesting how where and why it diverges from the original because mm -hmm. i mean it diverges fairly early on but the the whole story of like scott pilgrim versus the world is about scott I mean, Scott has to fight through all of uh, Ramona's evil exes to prove he can, he's worthy to date her. Um, but, like, at the end of the, the movie, uh, spoilers, or watch our other uh, podcast uh, episode on this, uh, he, when he tries to do it for love of uh, Ramona, he kind of falls apart and doesn't win at the end. Um, he has to learn to better himself. The power of self-respect. Right, he has to accept himself and have the power of self-respect instead of the power of what he thought was love for Ramona. Mm -hmm. And so it's about Scott's journey to be, to be worthy instead of prove himself worthy to others. Um, this show flips the script and makes it about Ramona and her journey to be, to kind of be worthy to reciprocate that love, be able to accept and be loved by him mm -hmm. uh, she, because in the original story she's not the most active character she's fairly i mean she fights in a couple of fights but like it's scott it's about scott uh whereas here she actively goes back and reconnects and resolves, reconciles, reconciles. And resolves, has closure with her exes. works through the problems that surfaced and caused them to to grow apart Mm -hmm. And at the end, what what wins the battle isn't Scott Pilgrim defeating older Scott. There is nothing young Scott could do different to save the timeline. It is about Ramona gaining the perspective of herself from the future and uh, having that moment of clarity that uh, maybe the uh, common factor of why every relationship I've been in fails is me. Um, and so it's about her learning to work on herself and, and that is ultimately what's going to be a better timeline. Mm -hmm. So I think like it was an interesting way to flip the story. This is how you adapt something and tell your own story with it <clears throat> in a way that's interesting. They're still faithful to all the characters. Oh yeah. It feels like the original character straight out of the original movie at least. It's like they aren't they aren't trying to tell Edgar Wright and I forget the other guy who's heavily involved in directing Jose something something, something. something. Yeah. but they're not out 
to tell their own story per se. Like, they're not projecting their own narrative onto the world. They are dealing with the characters that are in the world and exploring a plausible narrative mm -hmm. that it's like is already there. Yeah. It's like if Marvel What If was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it takes this What If alternate timeline scenario and, like, follows it to its logical conclusion. And, like, and treats it seriously. Oh, yeah. And all the characters, like, it's very different and it's kind of fun to watch how it's... I love how often in the show they make reference to the fact that it's different. They lampshade like, it, yeah. <laughs> they very heavily lampshade things. Mm -hmm. Like, in, in the... When Scott uh, is meeting Ramona at uh, the, the party for the first time, like, in the original... In the movie and in the original He makes comic, small talk about Pac-Man. Yeah, he makes small talk about Pac-Man and how the original name was changed and stuff. Um, whereas in uh, the animated show, he brings up Sonic the Hedgehog and about how there were two different shows in the 90s starring the same like character and but we had very voice different actor, tones yeah. and had the same voice actor. Isn't that funny that two different shows with the same characters and the same voice actor had very different directions for the story and the characters? <laughs> There's and, other moments too where it's like cuz Lucas Lee is like um, you know, action star who falls out of action movies cuz he, he just is too punk rock and doesn't care. But um He's like, yeah, I can't really get any roles this, these days. It's either the, the only thing I, the only job I've managed to get lately is the voice actor in an animated series. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many like great meta jokes mm -hmm. that I like really enjoyed. And there's little things they put in that were probably, I think, probably present in the comics. But like the the paparazzi being like literal ninjas that they mm -hmm. have to fight. Yeah, I think there there. Were, I'm not familiar enough with the comics. Yeah. But it wouldn't surprise me if there were elements from later, like, arcs in the comics that they pull from to get some of their ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the the one piece of divergence um, that differs quite a bit from the movie is that you don't really get Scott's, like, contending with his ex, Envy Adams, very much. That, mm -hmm. That closure doesn't really happen, but... But also, it's like, it's flipped, right? Because yeah. in... Because Ramona doesn't get that closure in the Scott Pilgrim versus the World movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott is the damsel in distress in this episode. Yeah. Because it's not... And it's not his story, despite being named after him. And there's part of me going into the into the show. I mean, that the name Scott Pilgrim takes off is... <laughs> Strangely relevatory. Uh, he took off. Relevat Re revelatory. Re revelatory. There we go. But part of me went into this wanting, like, to see a more accurate visual adaption of the story of. Especially because in world. promoting the movie, they made an animated short explaining the backstory of Scott and Kim and mm -hmm. him moving to Toronto that they reference. I mean, it's the backstory. And it's and just. People were like, this is so great. They should do a whole movie like this. And, like, how about a series? And it's just a little bit rude, actually, that they do the whole first episode, beat for beat, shot for shot, like line for line, a adaptation of the of the comic mm -hmm. that was also very faithful in the first movie, and then you get the rug pulled out from under you at the very end of the first episode, where it's like, oh, you're different, actually. You're you're not what you told me you were. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. But then, over, you as once you get used to that after the initial shock, it's like, okay, what are they doing? Because, like, I respect it because it gives you a reason to watch this. Right. Instead of just go back and watch the movie, but it's animated, basically. And it makes, you know, as a series, it gives them more to work with in terms of content. I mean, there's more comics beyond versus the world. True. Uh, so that I was kind of hoping, oh, you start with versus the world, then you... Start adapting the rest of the comics that uh, general movie going show watching audiences yeah. are familiar with. It also makes sense. Like they, there's the audience that knew the original movie and they're trying to attract that back, as well as bring in new people who like animated shows. Hmm. So I, everything they did is like I understand why you did that. Well, weirdly, it's like a sequel to the movie. Yeah, and works better if you have the context of the original. Yep, and it because <clears throat> it. 
presumes that you're expecting certain things and it subverts those things in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely if anybody listening wants to watch this show, I would recommend the movie first. I recommend the movie on its own merits. Yeah. But uh, also... The original cast is in both, so... Right, so there's that consistency there. Mm -hmm. Which is nice. And a remarkable achievement they were able to pull that off. So right. I think Edgar Wright said the only reason, the only way he would do it is if he could get the whole original cast to come back. I also love how the director of the fake Scott Pilgrim movie in the show is Edgar Wrong. Yep. <laughs> that was very funny. Yep. And then uh, uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost make cameos. Weird Al does a voiceover cameo. Oh, that's right. They're yeah. doing like the behind the scenes thing of the, sh- the film film shoot. He's the guy who's like, this is behind the scenes. Yep. I'm like, hmm, I know that voice from someplace. <laughs> yep. That was pretty great. Uh, I guess, is there anything else we wanted? To, any other cool things before we get into the analysis? Be forewarned, there's a bit of, uh, there's a bit of gay stuff going on. Well, in, in the original, there was Scott's cool gay roommate, right? Yep. Uh, and in this show, they do lean harder into that joke. Yep. Which is like okay, it, it dominates a better part of one episode. It's like okay, you could you could stand nothing like up on it. Explicit, just kind of like eh, nah, it's like oh, gross. let's go read lines in my trailer, buddy. Yeah, there's that whole so that, sub. That's plot a whole thing in that one episode. It's animated, and then it's also one thing. of one of uh, Ramona's exes is a girl. Mm-hmm. So which, there's that. But there's that. Uh. If you can look past that, though, there's a lot there. So, um, on that note, truth. What truths can we find in Scott Pilgrim Takes Off? It's important to to grow in self-awareness. Yeah. And <clears throat> there's a bit of reflection on Ramona's part. And like, yeah, maybe I am the problem. Maybe I am the common denominator here. And and it's interesting to me that that comes as a revelation from her older self. Mm-hmm. It's like, you kind of need people who've lived life to, to tell you about the mistakes they've made. Yeah. So that you can be aware of them. It's, it's always good to have a mentor... Who has who can relate to your experiences? Who can give you practical advice on your situation in particular? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like, and Ramona having spent like fifteen years, they said, in the best, healthiest relationship of her life, and still having the same problems occur within herself. Yep. It and then ten years beyond that of him just going a wall to work out in a shed for <laughs> a later ten battle years, yeah i haven't been outside in 10 years <laughs> uh literally go touch grass man <laughs> yeah but like having that perspective to look back on her whole life and if you could go back 30 years to if you could turn back time to the, to good, the good old, old days. days if you had the chance to change your fate would, would you, you? <laughs> <laughs> redheads man man well, yeah. she's a redhead, like, maybe one of the episodes? I don't know. I don't think she, she ever goes red. She was mostly, like, green and purples. I was saying more like, well, Scott's not really redhead. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway. Mentorship, good. Having space and time to reflect, good. Um, Reconciling with your past, good. Having uh, closure with people you've been romantically involved with. And not allowing yourself to be burdened by resentment. Yep. And because each of them has sort of their closure moment, and they're able to move on and live healthier lives as well. And own up to mistakes you've made and the ways you've mistreated people. If you can't like deal with and address and resolve the problems of your past, they're going to show up again in the future, and you can't really move on until you have moved on. Yeah. You got to grow through it. Yep. Grow as you go. (laughs) Uh, 
goodness. Veganism gives you power. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke so much from the original. I, I missed the vegan police bit. That part <laughs> that was, was, such that a was great so thing. funny. I put half and half in your coffee. Half and half isn't vegan? <laughs> yeah, that, that was a great that was a great bit. But they play I mean there's like the vegan portal is a major piece of the plot in this. Just yeah, it's it's pretty good. The uh, vegan robot is even more powerful. <laughs> it's never he's ultimate vegan. Vegan. He has the power to travel back in time because he's ultimate vegan because he's as a robot, he's never eaten anything, especially not meat. So he's the most powerful vegan of all time. <laughs> Uh, such a great bit. But, uh, goodness, uh, Ramona learning, as we talked about, to reconcile with her past and become a better person to reciprocate love back to Scott. Mm. And allowing herself to be moved by the affection she has found for Scott, even though they've known each other for, you know, a, a couple days yeah. at the outset, to, like, move to her to sacrifice and to do and move her to have well because she had sort of like left all of her exes in the dust and realized the error of her ways and try to go back and you know reconcile and get closure with them because that left an impact on them mm -hmm. they're not just evil for no reason they're just they're just they're hurt yes and guess what uh who hurt them yep ramona who's the evil ex now yep <laughs> exactly uh young neil no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> there's a scott's crew there's a camaraderie among yeah. scott's for crew knives is takes more of a back seat in this story she does but she's just sort she of like i don't really like, like you much ramona but i'll get over it kind of a attitude in in this show um and i think scott himself has this kind of naive innocence about him uh Maybe maybe a bit like, um, he's he's dumb. He's yep. kind of a, he's kind of a dumb, but also like, there's the lovable idiot. Yeah, uh, and he may not have the forethought to break up with his old girlfriend before getting a new one, which uh, problems. Which he might shouldn't have probably been dating in the big, in the first place. Because yeah, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, he he just kind of has this. Uh, pure, like, admiration, affection, attraction to Ramona, and he seeks it out. Yeah. Uh, even though he's o she's only the girl that popped up in his dreams a couple of times. <laughs> he he finds out she works delivering Netflix video movies, and so he uh, rents a DVD. rents a DVD and sits at the door for like a week for her to show up. Um. Yeah, and then uh, Ramona not giving up on Scott is sort of one of the themes of the show. Because mm -hmm. um, she searches for him when he goes missing and she discovers that he's not dead. He's actually somewhere else and that sort of thing. But then also like realizes, oh, I give up on Scott in the future too. I need to change so I don't hurt him like I hurt the others. Um, cause, uh, when there are sparks, you don't give up. I yep. Guess. Yeah. A bit cheesy, a but bit cheesy, but like, eh, but so conveys the point. So. Yeah. Any other elements of goodness in here? The pearl of great price, you know? Yeah. Mm. It's like you, you sell everything for that <clears throat> thing that is most worthy. And although you don't run Scott away Pilgrim that. is not. The most worthy. Jesus Christ is the most worthy. Right. Absolutely, yes. This is, <laughs> it is pointing at that sort of innate desire pla implanted within our hearts mm -hmm. for God. Yeah. For it is communion it, with him, for community with him. The show never for reaches for this, with him. but that's where it ultimately, but, the roots right, ultimately that, lie. That's where all of this points. Yeah. It's in a very flawed human perspective and understanding of it, mm -hmm. but it's... It's human, and therefore in the image of God. Yep. So there is always truth and goodness to be drawn from a human experience. Yeah. Uh, beauty. Animation's fun. Really well animated. Music is great. Music's super fun. Like the intro ending music. So the writing really and dialogue, well. everything's super snappy and witty and funny as you would expect. Michael Sarah is was 
always typecast. Like one, like his best role ever probably is Scott Pilgrim, because it's sort of a melding of the two. Yeah, before he v- evolves into Andy Samberg. Yeah. Oh, that's that's who that was, playing older Scott. That makes sense. I don't know that that's the case. It's just a meme that Jesse Eisenberg evolves into Michael Sarah evolves into Andy oh, Samberg. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gotcha. That's the Pokemon evolution flowchart. Gotcha. But I love just kind of the the candy coated arc, you know, arcade, vibrant, colorful aesthetic. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there's there's so few things that are willing to do that. It's, like we talked about, it's got to be dark. It's gotta every be episode starts with Ramona dyeing her hair a different gritty, color. Realistic. And this is just like <clears throat> almost garish. Yep. At certain points, and I just love it. It's very much uh, 80s, 90s nostalgia, late 2000s webcomic. Like, yep. Unabashedly. That's where that's where the origins of the arts, art is and the story. And that spirit bleeds through. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And Especially really... the, the first you know, 15 seconds of the intro animation. And... Mm. and the whole intro animation is like, well, it's very anime intro, but also like mm. very just... Very colorful and high energy and fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's got this. It's very offbeat, you know. It yeah with some yeah with some great visuals and stuff here and there, especially like the fight scenes and stuff. Well, the fight there. scenes get really creative. I like the one where they're fighting in the in the uh, video rental store because those still exist at this time. Yep, uh, and. Uh, Which is they, really they're like funny diving that... in and out of the different movies, and so they like take on slightly slight stylistic changes, whether they're in like the the western on top of the train, or they're like or in the noir film, or you right. know all the the horror movie or whatever, and like the Japanese samurai film. It's like they're 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 going back and forth between these various movies, and it's just really fun. Uh, they do something similar. The the skateboarding fight in with uh with the paparazzi Lucas Lee. paparazzi yeah. with Lucas Lee. <laughs> like, yep. The set pieces are really creative. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also like the uh, Matthew Patel's like dance battle stuff, and it's just like a lot of it is like drawn from the comics. Some of it was additions made for the movie, but like it's all just I don't know. It's it's visually just turns out Jason fun. Schwartzman makes for an excellent animated movie villain voice because that's he's Gideon Graves as well as the Spot. In uh, Into oh. the Spider Verse, and the dad in uh, Asteroid City. Okay. Um, yeah, he's been showing up on our podcast a lot lately. Now that I think about it, <laughs> in some form or another. Well, we haven't covered. Well, we haven't talked about it in, in across the Spider Verse. Across yet. the Spider Verse, yeah, yeah. Did we do Asteroid City? We didn't. We watched it. We watched it. We haven't talked about. We it. decided we didn't want to talk about it. Yes, we did. We didn't want to talk about it. We may still talk. About we may. We may find if it. If we can figure out what to say about it. <laughs> that would require anyway, anyway. The alien's funny. That's what. That's my only comment <laughs> on it so far. Uh, but yeah, beauty, unity. You, what brings it all together? Hurt people hurt people. Mm-hmm. That's one cliche, I suppose, you could throw into the mix. But... Uh, but it's maybe, not like... Maybe I'm the problem is something one needs to reflect on from time to time. I don't know if that's like the unifying principle of the show, but relationships are a two way street. Yeah. Each person brings their baggage into it that they have to contend with to form a new whole relationship. And in that way, what you kind of unifies it is a, it's a response to, the original Scott Pilgrim yep. film story. Uh, it is a an alternate perspective on it. it is a it's, it's a twist. Um, it's a twist. So like that's kind of like the the fundamental like idea the show is based on, where it's let's tell um, Ramona's story or a story about Ramona because she was a less active character in the original Scott Pilgrim. So. Ultimately, it's a. It's about Ramona. It's a a. Like her dealing with her stuff as opposed to Scott dealing with Scott stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Because the first movie was almost like structured like a Zelda game. Well, that's that's the whole kind of thing. It's like you fight all the bosses. It's it's a beat 'em up. They yep. live in beat 'em up land. You do the stages, fight the seven evil exes over the course of like the six stages, and boom, you win. You get the girl you kiss at the end. Yep, and this is. Not exactly. It, it, there's, I don't think there's like a specific one to one for this because it's all about resolution of the conflict. Right. Uh, I mean, in a certain sense, Scott brings it all together. Yeah. And in he does. a certain sense, Ramona brings it all together. Which is kind of the nature of relationships that the both of you come together. You got to bring it all together, together, man. Yeah. So that's about all I have to say about that. I think we're good. So thanks for watching or listening. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for thanks, thanks for, for being here. Thanks us for consuming time. the content. The content. <laughs> uh you can well, yeah, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Spotify. We're also at Palapapus on Twitter. Uh I guess we have a Facebook page I haven't posted anything on for like two years. So make make of that what you will. Is anybody still on Facebook anymore? Yeah, I'm Apple Podcasts Facebook. if that suits your fancy. Um, you could all go on archive.org and find the Stitcher the page <laughs> on yeah. which we used to be. Uh, but yeah, um, the uh, Point, if if you're listening to like us and now, subscribe, you know where to, to find the us. show. It supports the show. It helps. Yeah, we'll make it regardless P- of whether push the buttons, it, but. share it with your friends. They, if if it's easier to share a YouTube link with people, do that. Might be easier than Spotify. Whatever works for you. Listen so. to the raw audio on archive.org. <laughs> if the you, raw edited audio. That if might you be know. the only surviving trace of our content that you are listening to. Mm-hmm. Hello from the past. <laughs> Hello, old Nathan. <laughs> 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 or even older Nathan, yes. as the case may be. So, yeah, we will catch you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. See ya.